talking loud enough. Is it on? There we go. There we go. First of all, I want to thank the president of Grace School of Bible for inviting uh, myself and my family out. We really enjoyed coming out this week. I, I don't know about you guys, but I was really waiting for this week. So uh, it's always exciting to come out and see the saints here and see uh, new faces from all across the globe. And uh, But right off the bat, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and get uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. My topic this morning is about the word of truth, and my verses are 2 Timothy 2.15 and Ephesians chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to um, to talk a little bit about rightly dividing to be understood and proclaimed correctly. Did you know in in five times in your Bible, in the King James Bible, the word of truth, the exact phrase is written? There's one in Tom's past book of Psalms, Psalms 119, 44, but now books of 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 2, uh, excuse me, 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, 2, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 6, excuse me, I'll get it straight here in a minute, Corinthians chapter 2, I was one of the ones that went to the... Uh, Cubs game yesterday. So when I shared with uh, Brother Richard, the White Sox will be in Cleveland this coming weekend. So we'll make up the difference. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, 15, and in James chapter 1, verse 8, you'll find that phrase, word of truth. Okay? Only once the word of the truth is written, and that's Colossians chapter 1, verse 5. Back at our little church in Canton, Ohio, we have a saying. Studying the whole Bible, the Bible's own way. And uh, studying the whole Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible's own way, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. I would like to use this to help us to understand some things about right division. So go with me in 2 Timothy chapter 3. How many scriptures are given by God? All scriptures are given by God by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. There is profit in God's word, isn't there? Okay? There's profit for doctrine. There's profit for reproof. There's profit for correction. There's profit for righteousness. There's profit for the nation of Israel. There's profit for the body of Christ. And all books are written for you, correct? But not who? To you, I think we maybe have that basics down. This is why we must have to use our Bible to show us out. Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen says, "Study to show thyself approved unto who? Your preacher man, your wife, as Marvin mentioned, no. to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." There's a verse similar to that in the time past. And, and for the nation of Israel, Nehemiah chapter 8. Uh, we won't go there, but you look at that verse sometime, and it calls them to understand some things. But here we find in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, that um, what to do. What do you do? Study. And why do you do it? To be a proven God. Okay, how do you do it? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And that's, this is truth from truth, by the way. No one tells you they're going to wrongly divide the word, do they? So you either rightly divide it, or you wrongly divide it, or you don't divide it all. But they're not going to tell you this. So when you read your newspaper, it's very, very clear how the newspapers divvied up, okay? You go to the political to see the political. You go to uh, obituaries to read obituaries, funny papers, and so on. Roadmaps. You know, I'm a truck driver by trade, my tent-making job. We have to use roadmaps. If I got on to come up here, if you're familiar with roadmaps at all, you understand that there's like a 294, okay, and then maybe a 355. You know what that is? One of them's a bypass. One of them's a spur. One of them will take you directly in. The other one will take you around. So, so you have to rightly divide roadmaps. You've got policies. That's back in, uh, in Canton, Ohio. I'm also the 
uh, board chairman of Heritage Christian School, we have a policy book, much like this one, based on this one. And within that policy book, there's procedures you have to follow. Okay? If you don't rightly divide that policy book and give somebody the wrong procedure to follow, that's error. Okay? But anyway, we have to be clear and not clever when we show people how to uh, rightly divide the word of truth. Let's get this very, very clear right off the bat. There's no contradictions in my King James Bible. Okay? Period. Okay? First, very first verse in your Bible, Genesis 1-1, says God created what? In the beginning, God created the... Right off the bat, if you will, God makes a distinction between what? Heaven and earth. Right off the bat. This is a twofold purpose in God's Word. The purpose is prophecy in the earth, and the mystery program is in the heaven. From Genesis 1-2 all the way over to Acts chapter 9, and from Hebrews to Revelation... God's purpose in the earth and his, and his purpose in the earth and primary through the nation Israel, okay, on the earth, okay, and those books right there. Look with me, if you will, to get Luke chapter 1 and Acts chapter 3. Luke chapter 1 and Acts chapter 3. Let's look at some verses between these two programs and rightly dividing word between the prophecy program and the mystery program. These are called contrasts, okay. Very simple. And I want to thank the man that's been in my life for the 18 years that has stuck with this message and, and stood for truth and didn't wander off in faraway places, if you will, and, and showed and shared this with me. They, they showed it 18 years ago in a, in a little Baptist church, some differences between Israel and the body of Christ, between prophecy and and the nation, uh, the body, mystery, if you will. And that really enlightened me in some things. And we was talking about some understanding and heart condition stuff. I wanted to be right for God, for one thing, okay? And when I st- sit down, I said, if this is right, understanding the Word of God, right and divided, understanding dispensational truths, then I wanted to be right. And when I took on that mentality in my mind that this was right, okay, not this, you know, you got God's word and you got Edward, okay? So God's word always prevails, and then you got your word, by the way. But this is the authority, and and that's really helped me understand something. I don't know it all. Don't claim to know it all. Probably never will until I get sit at the right hand with God, you know, with Jesus Christ and knowing some things. But what he's written to us and for us is right here. We don't have to wonder about anything else will take me the rest of my life to just understand a portion of this. But in, uh, in Luke chapter 1 and Acts chapter 3, Luke chapter 1 verse 68, Blessed be the God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed whose people? His people. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. For he spake by the mouth of all his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Okay, got that? Acts chapter 3. <clears throat> Acts chapter 3. Verse 30, uh, 21. Whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which... God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Verse 24, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of what? These days. Prophecy is something known since the world began. Spoken since the mouth of, uh, spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets and foretold of these days. Okay? Now, the mystery program, the contrast of that. Romans through Philemon. Go with me to Romans chapter 16, Ephesians 3, and Colossians 1 if you want to turn there. <clears throat> Keep your fingers in Acts chapter uh, 3 because we're coming right back there. Romans chapter 16, Ephesians 3, and Colossians 1. You're welcome. Romans 16, many of you know this by heart. My, my wife and my son's 
made a tune to this so he could remember the verse in, in, in school. But Romans 16, 25, Now to him that's power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the what? The revelation of the prophecy, mystery, baby, you're awake, right? Mystery, okay, which was kept secret, what? Since the world began. Ephesians chapter 3, which in other, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known until the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy prophets and apostles and prophets by the what? Spirit. Colossians 1, 26. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest. to the saints. The mystery program is something kept secret since the world began, was not made known, hidden from the prophets. Now, these verses that we just compared, are they the same? No, they're not. To identify the twofold purpose in God's word, the prophecy and mystery program, you are rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? That's truth with truth, not truth with error. How much do you think this King James is truth? This is. How about yours? All of it. Just a little bit? No, all of it. And God's will, we understand, and, and, and it's been touched on a little bit this week, week already, that God's will in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, is to have how many men to be saved? All men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1. I told you stay in Acts. Get Acts chapter 2 because we're going to turn there very shortly. Hey, God gave you ten fingers, ten toes, all kinds of pencils, right? Okay. Ephesians chapter 1, this is one of my verses that I'm looking at. Let's look at salvation when you come to understanding some um, a contrast in God's Word, okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 13. In whom ye also trusted after that you have heard, what's those next three words? Word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, okay? And whom I also after you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 5, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherefore ye have heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. The word of truth, the gospel of your salvation is in this, and it's in this Bible, Okay? How many Gospels do you think they are? Four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Look at this. There's many of them. The Gospel of the circumcision, the Gospel of the uncircumcision, the Gospel of the kingdom, the Gospel of the grace of God, the Gospel of God, the Gospel of Christ, the everlasting Gospel. Here's one in the word of truth, the Gospel of your salvation. Okay? This is good news from the, for the deliverance. Okay? Stand and see the salvation of God. Your salvation, your deliverance, okay? Go with, I told you to turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and get 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There you go. Got to get a rhythm going. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And Peter just got through preaching about, about, about well, we'll get to that. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Very large percent of a mainstream denomination out there will somehow, some way, base their belief in that, in that verse. Okay? Did you believe that? to be saved from the penalty of death. Okay. Go to, go to um, 1 Corinthians 15. Now, Peter did preach the cross in there. Don't ever think he did not. He did preach the cross. He preached it with conviction and it pricked her heart. Okay? But it wasn't as what? Good news as we say. Keep your hands in the Acts and go to uh, 1 Corinthians. 
15. Verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declared in you the gospel which I preached in you, which I also received, and, and wherefore you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I, what, what I preached in you, unless you believe in vain, how that Christ, excuse me, for that I delivered you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to Scriptures, and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to Scriptures. You got three things there. In Acts chapter 2, you have repent, be baptized for the remission of sins and receive the Holy Ghost. Okay? And here you got Christ died, was buried, and he rose again. Are they the same? I've had people say, yes, they are. You have to spiritualize those things to make those fit. But they are not the same. Look at Acts chapter 3 and get Romans chapter 5. Acts chapter 3. If you believe that Acts chapter 2, verse 38, is the gospel for your salvation, look at Acts chapter 3. Peter once again is preaching um, to the nation Israel, by the way. We'll look at that in a little bit. I said Romans 5, and get Colossians 2. Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye therefore. If you believe that this gospel in Acts chapter 2 is the gospel for your salvation, okay, and be baptized for the remission of sins, Acts chapter 3, Peter says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of God, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached to you. When are your sins blotted out? What's that? If you, if your sins, well, hang on a minute. But if you believe Acts chapter 2, verse 38 is the gospel of your salvation, you have to be repent and be baptized for remission of sins and receive the Holy Spirit. According to this verse, when are your sins blotted out? When the times of refreshing shall come. That's not good news for me. It may be great news for you. Okay, but look at look at Romans chapter five. I shared this many many years ago with the, with a couple. Okay, and they was like didn't know what to do because they're basing their salvation in that verse, and they never seen the other verse. Okay, I believe well what the Bible says. Okay, <laughs> Amen. Romans chapter five and Colossians chapter two. Romans chapter five and Colossians chapter two. These are also called dispensational truths, by the way. You know, when you rightly divide the word of truth, you want some dispensational truth in there. We'll get to that shortly. But uh, Romans chapter 5, verse, which verse you want to go to? Every one of them is good in verse, chapter, verse, verse 11. But look, but look at verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That was me. I've not been you. That was me. Verse, verse 8, but God commended his love towards us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Okay. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies, when we were enemies, we were re- reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled by, by, we shall be saved by his life. And here's the verse I want to go to, verse 11. For not, not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have when the times of refreshing shall come and he sent forth Jesus Christ. Now, that's great news, people. Now, he's given it to you, okay? The, uh, receive the uh, atonement. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Great verse, you can start with verse 10 all the way down to 13, but verse 10 says you're complete in Christ. And verse 11, in whom you're so, also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without what? Hands. That's God's doing. That's the one, one baptism, one circumcision that you need. And putting off the, the bodies, the sins of the flesh and the circumcision, buried with him. Who's that him? And that's not water. That's him. You're identifying yourself with him. 
Look at this. Risen with him through the faith of the operation of who? Who's doing operating here? God is. Not your preacher. Not you and I. God's doing the operation. Okay? That's a difference in some things. Look at this, verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcised in your flesh, will begin? Hath he quickened together with him, forgiving you how many trespasses? All trespasses. You have forgiveness when again? You don't have to wait for nothing. You better understand what program you're in and how to rightly divide the word of truth. Go to Matthew. We look in some Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Matthew 24. Get, and stay in Colossians. Keep your finger in Colossians. Matthew 24. We're going to use a couple verses in here to compare some things. But Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. The disciples asked the Lord, when shall these things be? They wanted to know some things, Okay. They want to know some things about the end time. Verse 14. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, Then and then shall the... Got that? That's what he said. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, okay, then shall... Nation, okay? What's well, Colossians chapter 1? <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1. We're going down salvation, gospel, rapture, some things. Just showing some contrast here. Not too heavy stuff. Look, first Corinthians, uh, excuse me, Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, ground it and settled, and, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under what? Heaven. Wherefore thy Paul was made a minister. My question is why hasn't the end come? Okay. What's that? There's a different gospel. Remember gospel and circumcision? Gospel and circumcision. It's a different gospel. How many gospels? It's a different gospel. That's why you better know how to rightly divide the word. Okay? What did I say? Uh, Matthew chapter 24. You're Matthew 24? Get First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. Matthew 24. This is not the rapture, people. I know people say, oh, you can find the rapture. This, it's about tribulation. Matthew is a book about the who? The king, and he's setting up his kingdom, okay? But in verse 31, in Matthew 24, you can read, we, for a second time, we're not going to do that, from 29 down to 31, okay? Verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to another, Compare that First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four. Verse thirteen says, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep." You go down to verse fifteen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain and with the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Verse 16, for the angels, is that what yours says? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay? Who's coming after you here? The Lord. Okay? Himself. Amen. But look at verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 
That's comfort. There's no comfort if you're going to the tribulation period. You know, I've, I've watched people and learned sometimes. I just turned, uh, is it half a century? You know, I thought my life was going to be grand after 50, but it's, it's been tough. <laughs> it really has. Y'all got something to look forward to. But look, um, but the comfort, there's no comfort in these words if you're going through the tribulation period. And I've watched some people talk about how you can lose your salvation, how you're going through. Tri- they scare you. They don't want you to know this comfort because that gives you some liberty. I think Richard, somebody talked about leave last night, the Navy. That's shore leave. You're going on the shore. You want to leave. Okay, that's liberty. Okay, I like that. There's comfort in that for me. And, and, and which brings us to wrath, by the way. Matthew 24, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, Peter's and the others warned of Israel of the coming wrath of God on the prophetic time schedule and was prepared by the Lord to see and go through the tribulation period. They were preparing for that. But on the other hand, go to Romans chapter 5, and you're 1 Thessalonians, stay there. Romans chapter 5. On the other hand, Paul was given to declare that the long sufferings of God and God and coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to, come, to gather us unto him and deliver us from wrath. Okay? And in and, 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 and Romans chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 9. I skipped that when we was reading down through there. It says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath, what? Through him. There's only one wrath I know of. And my wife don't give it to me when I don't do the honeydew list, okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. <clears throat> and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And you can read down through uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 all the way to chapter 5 verse 11. God hath not appointed us to what? To wrath. You better know how to rightly divide the word. Okay? When we read 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13, it says all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. Within this, be turning to Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Within this twofold purpose, the prophets and mystery, there is a threefold division, what we call threefold division. Okay? They have a chart up here. We don't, I know we don't preach the charts, but to me, that's one of the greatest visuals that you can see. You know, when you, especially when you're teaching. I understand I'm not the greatest teacher in the world, don't claim to be. But when you're explaining some things about right division, you're educating people. Come to the knowledge of the... And each one of us has a different way of doing things, don't we? You know? And you may reach somebody that's been in my church for years, may not understood, and then they hear you click. I've seen that happen. Okay? That's a blessing. You know? So look at this. Um, Ephesians chapter 2. These are called dispensations, uh, dispensational truths. I believe with all my heart that God himself was a dispensationalist when he laid out the word. Dispensational is a good Bible word, people. Don't run from that. I'm not saying you do. I don't. I, you know, I, I know that has uh, liberated me. I'm not a, a, a B or a C or P, B, G and all that stuff. You know, denomination. I'm a Bible-believing dispensationalist. You know, some of you use the term grace believers. There's grace all through the Bible, aren't there? You know, so look at this, Ephesians chapter 2. This is why you have to understand the Word of God. It's not enough to be literal, right? It's not enough to be scriptural, but you must be dispensational. I remember when I was talking to a brother that's here with us now that uh, was talking about dispensational truths, and he shared with me, he said, you find that in the King James Bible, you, Okay. Dispensational, dispensationalism, uh, dispensation is in your Bible four times. If you don't have a King James Bible, you won't even find that. 
So how can you understand dispensational truths if it's not laid out the way God gave it to you, okay? Within the first five books, I told you to go to Ephesians chapter 2, within the first five books of your Bible, there's three dietary laws. I'm trying to give you some little, little tidbits here. Adam was in the garden, and every tree was good for what? Food, okay? Adam was a vegetarian. Noah, as God said, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. So if you catch it, you can eat it. Well, you go fishing, you go hunting, you know, the animals run from you. Okay? God told Mo- Moses you ha- that you have clean and unclean food. No catfish. I mean, like catfish. Yeah. You, couldn't, you can't eat catfish. Unclean. How about sausage? When you go out here, you can't eat sausage. It's unclean. So just imagine that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is, is, is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time, what time was that? Times past. Okay. Ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. I share this all the time. That verse scared me when somebody first showed me that. Nobody from the time I was coming up through in, uh, in the Sunday school classes ever showed me that. That's scary, people. You were without Christ, without God. Aliens. We was talking, Matt was talking about aliens. People said, you believe in aliens? I said, I do. I was one of them. You know? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Okay? But the distinctions in times past was circumcision and uncircumcision. That's the books of Genesis through Malachi. That's a prophetic program in times past. Okay? And we're not going to turn there, but Genesis chapter 17 and Genesis chapter 22 makes a distinction between circumcision and uncircumcision. God made that division, people. Just same as he said in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Okay? Genesis 22 says other nations, uncircumcision, would receive the blessings through Israel, the circumcision. Okay? You got Israel supposed to be up here on top. And everybody else is down here. It got so bad, you Jew, you dog. Name calling. Okay? Dog's a good word, isn't it? Dispensation of grace. Okay. But look, Ephesians, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 talks about Israel as to near God only. Israel was the only nation that was near to God. The Creator, by the way. I shared with you, we went downtown. There was many gods down there. Little G's. People's bowing down to them. I try to you know, be. I witness a few people, don't get me wrong. But look, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that Gentiles were far off, didn't it? So when you read those books, Genesis through Malachi, where are you at? Where are you? Times past. Nobody has a problem with that, do they? But what, what about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? That's changed, didn't it? Right? A lot of people don't know. Romans 15, 8, many of you know this verse. Go ahead and turn to that, 15, 8. Romans 15, 8. Romans 15, 8. <clears throat> Verse 4 says, Whatsoever written uh, things was written aforetime was written for our learning. We can learn some things from the whole Bible, can't we? That's, that's what we do. We study the Bible. We study the whole Bible. I've been accused in, in times past, of, oh, they just, they just study Paul's epistles. They don't believe the whole Bible. Verse 8, now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the Father. You know, if you have a new version translation, it says has become. There's a problem there, isn't there? Do you really realize that? That when, if it says has become, Paul is saying Jesus Christ is now has become the minister of the circumcision. So he's saying his writings is in where? 
times past. But the Bible tells us that times past, God made a distinction between who? Circumcision and uncircumcision. Jesus' earthly ministry, recorded Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, continues on the time past uh, uh, and with the same division. With the sake of time, we're not turning there, but you guys know this. Matthew 10, go not, right? Gentiles. Matthew 15, 24, the, the, uh, the woman wanted to be blessed, and he kept walking. You, that right there is a great testimony if you want to uh, just share that with somebody. We had a couple over a house one time. I showed them that verse. And the first thing she said, what Bible are you using? Because she recognized herself under that table, if you want to look at it, and she got the blessings for Israel. She was still in times past. And her husband turned the same Bible you have. Okay? Those verses like that will change your mind. John 4, Mark 7, Luke 13, all those in those books referring to Jesus Christ, the earthly ministry to the circumcision. The Israel only, the kingdom is at hand. Okay? It's prophesied in times past. Now it's at hand. So Christ dies at the close of the uh, uh, last chapter of Mark, Matthew, last chapter of Mark, last chapter of Luke. Last two chapters of John records the death of Jesus Christ. Okay. Time, did times past change after the resurrection? No, it did not. Okay. Beginning at Jerusalem to the Jews first. By the way, where is Jerusalem? Is it here today? Look out your window and here, here it is. This is your Jerusalem. You've heard that, haven't you? It's not. Jerusalem is over in the Middle East and it's always going to be over in the Middle East. Okay, this is where we're South Bend. We've got you got representations all over the nation right here. And where you look out your back door is not Jerusalem. In my case, it's Canton, Ohio. Okay, and I have to treat that as if my ambassadorship is who I am to share the gospel, of the grace of God. But look, Acts chapter one, Acts chapter two, Acts chapter three, Acts chapter five. Acts chapter 11, every one of these are still dealing with circumcision, not uncircumcision. Who are they talking to? Dealing with the Jews, you men of Israel, you men of Judea. There's, when you read those things, that's what, when these dispensations came to me in early 93, and they were sharing those verses with me, Sherry and I was in a Baptist Sunday school class learning some things in the book of Acts, and they read down through it like it was nothing. I went, that, I said, isn't he talking to the Jews? And the Bible teacher said, yeah. And kept reading like it was nothing. See? They're not even dividing. They're not even understanding some things. Even, in, uh, even as far as uh, Acts chapter 11, you can read this and see that you're still in times past when they're preaching to the Jews only. Then Acts chapter 15, circumcision saves. Unless you are circumcised, but Moses, you cannot be saved. See, the, see what I'm talking about? These Jews, excuse me, these Israelites understood some things that they was in a program, but they didn't understand the knowledge that was revealed to Paul. That's why you look at Galatians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, you can understand some things. You know, we was talking about words the other day. Your words mean something when you speak. It used to be a handshake. I'll be there. Man, when I see my dad and granddaddy used to do that, that, that was like, whoa, okay. They mean something. But today, you've got to have 15 lawyers to sign this. You know, 12 o'clock don't really mean 12 o'clock, by the way. You know, and it's things. No, it's the words. You let your words mean something. That's what we're trying to teach our, uh, we've got one kid left at our house. He's 17. You know, he's done got plans. He's going to go to reserves. You know, he wants to do boot camp in his uh, uh, junior year. He's wanting to get a lot of that stuff uh, behind him. You know, he's got plans. But I try to tell him, I said, you let your words mean what they say and say what they mean when you say you're going to do something. Because people look at that. But, but the kingdom starts, message started with John the Baptist, if you will, and it does not change till it gets to Paul. And in and, and Acts chapter 7, we also notice the, the fall of Israel. Okay? And in the middle part of Acts, Paul is risen up and begins a new program not only does I believe the Bible teaches the body of Christ started with Paul, the dispensation of grace started with Paul. Now, you can get in some 
doctrinal battles all you want to about Acts 2 and Acts mid Acts and, and Acts 28, but I'm here to tell you it started with Paul. And you're not going to move me from that. Okay? Believe me, the battles that Richard was talking about last night, each every one of us has been in there. I've been in them too. You know, you stand for truth. Okay? Don't worry about who's behind you. You do what's right with the Word of God, and people will be behind you. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. You've got to stand. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now, you're changing some things. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Or excuse me, by the blood of Christ. There's no difference now between Jew and Gentile. The middle wall, you read down through there, there's a, there was a spiritual wall. There was a, a legal wall. There was a physical law, wall in there. And it's all torn down. So these are the books of Romans through Philemon. Do you remember those dietary laws that I was talking about, those three that was in that first five books? And but now God told Paul, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if you receive it with thanksgiving. But I know if I go down here and eat 13 cheeseburgers, chances are my artery is going to be hard as that, right? And he also taught us to be doing all things in moderation, don't he? Right? So the prophetic program and in, 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 in time and in, but now has been postponed. Romans 11 tells you that. Through the fall of Israel, salvation is given to the Gentiles. Hey, I was a Gentile, but now I'm a saint of the Most High God. Okay? There's no distinctions between. And I know what a lot of people say. Well, Israel really didn't fall. The Gentiles was elevated up to their level. Yeah. That's era, you know, and they, they do anything and they, everything they can just to, just to get their point across, but it's not true. The, Israel's been blinded. 11, uh, Romans 11, 25 through 28 tells you that. They're blind. You want to be a part of a blind nation? Some people say I'm blind already when they see me drive down the highway, you know. But you don't want to be a part of a blind nation. nation. Romans through Philemon. It's the mystery program, the but now. Then you have ages to come, okay? God, ages come, uh, verse 7 over here in Ephesians, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. This will be the fulfillment of God's eternal purpose. Ephesians, uh, excuse me, Genesis chapter 1 all the way over to Acts chapter 9 and books of Hebrews to Revelation will be his fulfillment, Okay? They will take these books, and this is where the kingdom's established, and they'll take these books, and from my understanding what I believe, okay, they may be people in that time to start preaching Romans through Philemon to you. You know, yeah, it's a possible. But they'll have books that take them through the, the period that they're going to go through, and they're going to be Bible believers just like you that can understand the Word of God and believe it where they're at. If you believe you belong in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, to, to me that's between you and God, but you're in the era. You, got, you know people all the time tell you, you you're saved by the grace of God, you believe, trust Christ died for your sins, very rose again, but they want to take you back into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to try to live that. And those people in that time period, they couldn't do it. What makes you think you can do it? That's why you need that preacher up here, right, telling you what to do, put that thumb on you. The preachers that I know don't do that. They, they, they don't do that. Hebrews, James, Peter, John, Revelation, all those books has to do with Israel and the saints will have the understanding of what's going on. Just remember, in the twofold purpose of God's word, of prophecy and mystery, the, the, the threefold division, if you will, but now and times, uh, ages, but now, times past, but now and ages come. This will give you the basics of rightly dividing the word of truth. Don't err from that. You know, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to say, what if? What if Adam didn't have a belly button? You know, just things like that. 
You know, you start chasing those things. You, you start following bad doctrine. Before I started Grace School of Bible, by the way, you talk about anniversaries and stuff. This is the 10th year of myself when I started Grace School of Bible. So I, the, 10 years ago, I started Grace School of Bible, and then uh, uh, six years ago, five or six years ago, I, I desired the office of a bishop, and I was ordained here, and, and I've been working ever since. I've got a retirement plan. You know, y'all, y'all should think about that. But anyway, just to, but anyway, it's great. It's great things. But look, I want to close with a poem that I wrote uh, uh, started before I started Grace School Bible. I know now I haven't rewrote this to fit the five dispensations. You know, many people talk about seven dispensations, right? Okay, and we know that the, from the dispensation of promise, dispensation of law, dispensation of grace, dispensation of kingdom, and the, the uh, dispensation of the fullness of time. I wrote this poem many, many years ago um, called The Plan. Have you ever thought about dispensation? No, it's not a song, a dance, or a sensation. It's a dealing out, a stewardship, a major plan that God has been doing since the beginning of man. It started with innocence from the creation, then conscience and human government, which confused the nation. From the promise of Abraham from God's own mouth, to the law, Christ rejected, Israel cast out. From Paul, to the rap- from Paul to the rapture, it's grace we find. Next is the kingdom from the one left behind. There's seven in all that you have just heard. Can you find where you belong, rightly dividing the word? Father, we thank you for the day, and we thank you for things you've given us in life. We thank you for the blessings of the cross and through your bloodshed. In Jesus' name we pray.